One question is designed to give subscribers valuable insights on how executive leaders in college athletics think about key issues on their respective campuses, in their departments, or within their leagues and conferences. Greetings, this is Ty Brown and welcome to One Question, where we highlight executive leaders in college athletics. Our guest today is Lorenzo Guess. Lorenzo is the Associate Head Strength and Conditioning Coach and Director of Player Enrichment for Football at Michigan State University. Greetings, Lorenzo. Thanks for having me here on campus. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Great seeing you. Of course, Lorenzo, you've been in, in college athletics for 14 years. The majority of that you spent in strength and conditioning. You've done some on-the-field coaching throughout your career. Of course, you and I played together here at Michigan State years back, almost working on 20 years now, right? Going yeah, back. Yeah. <laughs> Spent some time. I recently had a conversation with Elliot Daniel, and Elliot is the Associate Athletic Director for Student Engagement. He talked about buy-in, and I bring that up because what I understand about college athletics is that the, the two positions are people who have the most interaction with student athletes are the people who work in strength and conditioning, and then the people who do student athlete development. And your role looks like it combines both of those, specifically for football when you talk about player enrichment, but also strength and conditioning. Can you tell me a little bit about what your role entails when you talk about director of player enrichment and associate head strength and conditioning coach? Uh, my role is, is it's a lot of work, first of all. And um, we get an opportunity to, to see the guys every single day. Um, we, we'll lift probably four days a week during off season and three days a week during the end season, and then at the same time also get an opportunity to meet with the guys as far as player development, personal development, um, networking, all the other stuff like once or twice a week. So I'll see the guys every single day throughout the whole entire year. When they're not working out, they're not in school, they still come back and I still see them again. So I, my, myself and Elliot have, got, have the opportunity to know the kid as a whole person, not just as a student athlete, and I think that's, that's awesome. Um, and we try to do a good job of training our guys to be good on the field and great off the field. All right, there, there's a benefit to you in terms of the relationships with the guys because in your position, you, you touch every single one of the football players that, that come to the school, right? Yes. And that's not just in strength and conditioning, obviously, that's an obvious thing. Mm -hmm. But talk about the player enrichment. There are some programs you put in place, you know, for when guys come in as a freshman and sophomore and all the way through. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, uh, the player program, player development program is called the Overtime Program. This is a um, three-tier program. The first tier is we would do a um, program with the freshmen called Keeping the Real, which is a transition from high school to college. And we would meet the freshmen every Monday for 30 to 45 minutes about different topics that would help them be successful on the field and off the field. Um, the second year we would do a mentorship program where we would try to get a, a, um, each student would try to get one person in their, their major and they meet with them, those individuals it's like twice a, a month for 30 minutes. And then for the juniors and seniors, we do a professional and career development sessions. We meet with those guys the last three weeks of each semester to help them with their resume, um, networking skills, and how to dress, stuff like that. And then and at the end of the semester in the spring, we had a, we just had a, um, last month a, a career fair for just the football, men's basketball, and women's basketball team. Is that that career combine thing you guys We call it the career combine, and we had those three teams me, we had 37 companies. We also brought back 10 to um, 15 alums, and they went through different sessions as far as how to dress and how to network. Then they went to the career combine, to the career fair with the 37 companies. Now, you work for a couple elephants in the profession. You talk about Ken Manny, who's been around for 17,000 years, right, in the football, in the strength and conditioning profession. He's an elephant in the strength and conditioning industry. And then Coach D'Antonio is well respected within the football coaching profession. Working for those two, I would imagine that a position such as this, where you know the heartbeat of the kids specifically from a physical standpoint, but then when you talk about mental and career and professional and personal development, you also have that heartbeat of the kid. Tell me how you feel like from your perspective, you've proven to be an asset for Coach Manny and for Coach D'Antonio here at Michigan State. I think it's a great asset because now like, I, I really know the kid. And I got, when I go talk to Coach Manny and Coach D'Antonio, they, they know that I really know the kid. I know their, their motivations. I know their home life. And I have a conversation with the, the two of them. They trust me. I also help also that with the school here. And I've been through what they're going through right now. So that's that's the buy-in the, kid, the kids get from me because I know what they're going through. 
and I think it's it's phenomenal because I get to go, I get to come back to school I went I went to I get to work here they get to pay me to do something I love doing and help these kids get to, uh, reach their goals so when I I don't say too much to Coach Manny or Coach D about the kids but when I do say something that we need to watch this kid because this happened or um, this kid excited for this or this is this one kid's goal um, they do listen. So, and I think it also helped too that Coach Manny was my strength and conditioning coach, yeah. and Coach D'Antonio was my position coach here. So they they trust me enough to bring me back, which is amazing. They trust me enough to tell them how the kids feel uh, right. what's on my mind. I, I'd imagine there, as as long as you've been doing this this dual role in this position, there there had to have been times when, and you, and you mentioned a little bit when there might be a kid where you might have a concern about, mm-hmm. hey Johnny over here. I think we probably need to either get some help for him or we need to keep an eye on him or something along those lines. Have you been in that situation? And without giving me too many details, how, how has Coach Manny or Coach D'Antonio, how do they receive that information? Or even do you go to a position coach and say, hey, I know he's one of your guys. Tell me about that type of, it's kind of a touchy situation, but sometimes you have to go say something because the guy might, might be in some have a situation. Yeah, so so go go back to the, let's go back to our um, overtime program, our freshman transition program, our keeping it real. That we meet with our young man, like I said, every Monday, and it's just myself and Elliot Daniels are in there, and we we talk come up with these different topics. The student athletes are free to say and talk about what they, say what they want to say, and we keep everything in there unless there's a situation that we need to go talk to the coaches or talk to someone outside. And when we do talk to the coaches, if a kid might be depressed, like one one topic would be depression or homesickness. And we had the kids that tell us if they're depressed or homesick, so we go talk to the coach. And we go talk to um, Dr. Nogo, our head athletic trainer, and we let them. T- um, Dr. Nogo t- decide what you want to do with the information. You see, usually we have a we have a sports psychologist, uh, Dr. Rosen, will talk to the, every single athlete. So he have a history of, of he have a history in relationship with all the kids. So if there's, issue, if there's an issue, we make sure we talk to the coaches, and the coaches will get on top of it. Then we talk to our, um, Dr. Nogo, and she will handle it. And like I said, it's free, and we tell our kids too that whatever you say stays in here. But we if we need to take it out. We talk take we take it out to somebody, and they have the, they know it, and we have the we they have our trust because we just don't share don't share information but with everybody. We just we share with Dr. Nogo and our coach D and that position coach. But the kids know if we think something is big enough, we may take yeah. it to somebody. They understand that. So yeah. so it's it's not like they're disappointed when you do. No, we'll tell them before too. We'll tell them like, okay, in front of we tell them we we'll put them to the side after the meeting and say, Well, we gonna let's go talk to okay. um let's go talk to Dr. Nogo. Um or let's go talk to Coach D about the situation because we wanna make sure that you are okay. Because especially with all the lot of stuff going on with the mental health, yeah. we wanna make sure all the guys are mentally health healthy mentally and physically, so they're going to be the best person they can be. That's important. You mentioned another elephant in a profession is Dr. Rosen in terms of uh, sports psychology. Now, I wonder, does it ever operate in the other direction? Do you ever have an O-line coach or a linebacker coach come and say, hey, Zo, you know, I was talking to old Timmy here. Have you seen anything in your interaction with them through the things you do? Has it ever come like that? Yes, it has. It was surprising to me when the, first, when the coach first came and said something to me about it. And I, we sat down and talked to the kid, and I and I have seen it, that that particular person. I did see some things that was going on, and I spoke to the kid actually earlier that day before the coach said something to me. But we sat him down and we both discussed the issue with the young man. And the good thing about it is it was he was a mature young man, and he, and he took our information and took it very well, and he became a better football player, better person. Sometimes you might get a guy and immature and get mad at everybody, and then going to rebel, but this young person was, was pretty good with it. Thinking about Zoe, thinking about the future, right? At some point in the future, whether it be near, whether it be midterm, away from now, who knows how long you'll be running your own program. I'd imagine that you see a benefit in this, right? The role of having a hand in player development, but also being in strength and conditioning. When you run your own program, this this may be a little irregular, but I guess wherever you are, if you're working with a football coach, you're working with basketball, working with you know an athletics director, you would see this as a benefit as a part of any strength and conditioning program, I'd imagine. Definitely, I do because, I, like you said before, like the strength and conditioning coaches are with the athletes the most of anybody. It's like like three to one to their position coach, and when the coaches on, on the road recruiting, the strength coaches are there. Um, when the kid got a full point in his class, guess who they see the next day? The strength and conditioning coach. So I always say that um, the strength and conditioning coaches, when them all the time, they know the, the real person, and I think that this would be a, a great benefit for a strength and conditioning coach. 
and the staff. So, like I said, one day I'll be a head strength coach, but at the same time I still want to be the director of player enrichment or player development because we are usually the backbone of the program. Nobody really talk about us, but we like the backbone of the program. We want us to make sure the kids are doing what they're supposed to do and make sure they're healthy. All right, and I'm, and I'm sure you work closely with Elliot, and this is a question that I'll probably have to do a follow-up with Elliot, Elliot on, but I wonder – if he gets approached by other sports about some of the things you guys do with your position here at football. Yeah, I've, I've got approached by other sports about our, this position. Um, I, but basketball, I talked to Coach Izzo about it, and there's some other sports about they need a person that – be a, a person, a player development person that's outside of this, their coaches. And I think it's a benefit for everybody because nowadays – now what's going on, you have different people that have um, – they had social athletic directors that like we had – like Elliot Daniels is the – um, play enrichment, like at Louisville, Pat Ivy is the social athletic director of performance and wellness. So more and more titles like these are coming up to help our student athletes become better people and make sure they're mentally and physically. You're tying it in, right? Yeah. We're not just running you and stretching you and getting you bigger. We're actually working on you as a person too. As a whole entire person. Time, especially with somebody that you see all the time. So you trust me and there's a level of respect yeah. there, right? I asked this final question here, and you know, I don't know if there's a way to do this, but I wonder in terms of how you report to Coach Manny or how you report to Coach D'Antonio or whoever you report to for your role in Director of Player Enrichment, what is the evaluation process for that? I mean, how can they tell that you're doing a good job? Do you give them reports over time, or do they just see the student athletes getting jobs? Like, tell me about how they see success in, that, in what you're oh, doing. What we'll do is, that, like, every other week, I will meet with Coach D and tell them what's going on with the student athletes as far as the freshmen, or sophomores, or the juniors and seniors. And the way I, I see that, the way we get evaluated is if the kids are, the grade point average is really going good, you don't have as many. Um, guys being late or not going to classes or lift groups, and that they stand out of trouble. And also the last one is they maturing mentally because sometimes you might have a guy as a freshman that's still the same mentality as a junior and senior. Right. Um, and that's how they evaluate it. And Coach D will ask us a million questions about why you do, why you chose this topic or what, what y'all doing this, in this meeting. And that's how I feel that he evaluating it. Like you said, buy-in buy in earlier. So going back to that now – this program is very successful because Coach D'Antonio and Coach Manny and Dr. Nogo, they have buy-in to what we're doing. Because uh, Ailey and I will talk to everybody on the staff and tell them know what we're doing, and they have buy-in. If the coaching staff don't have buy-in, no matter what you do, we're not making any sense because they're not going to trust it. If the, the coaches don't trust it, the kids are not going to trust it. It's almost like when you look at planes and they have an on-time percentage. So when people are in class and everybody's doing what they're supposed to do, the percentage of them doing great is the evaluation, right? Yeah. Of course, you would tell a coach if somebody hasn't come or didn't make something or something like that. But it's like, all right, coach, here we go. 95% of our players were on time today. 85% of our players got all their grades in, something like that, right? So. This is amazing. Uh, this is nothing that me and Elliot intended. So we keep attendance for the guys that come to the meetings. And for the last seven years, I did the numbers. We had 90, like 97% in attendance. There's no punishment for not being there. We just ask the guys just to be here. If we have a meeting at 3 o'clock, be at the meeting at 3 o'clock. And they're all there. Attended, paying attention, they asking questions. And this and this it's amazing. When you report to coach and report to yeah. Coach Manny and Coach D'Antonio, you talk about how hey, look, all these guys came, this is yeah. what we've done. And even if you were to give them a three or four year synopsis kind of snapshot of what's happening, you can tell them you had ninety seven percent attention. Yeah, yeah they're all there. That's excellent information. Lorenzo, this has been an excellent conversation. I really appreciate you joining us here on one question. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. That was Lorenzo Guess. He's the associate head strength and conditioning coach and director of player enrichment here at Michigan State University. And of course, this is Ty Brown with one question. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today. This episode of One Question is produced by Spades Media Group, solving problems using creative leadership.